Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Maradian here at the Paris Air Show at the historic airfield in Le Bourget, just outside the French capital. Our coverage here is sponsored by L3 Technologies as well as Leonardo DRS. And most of the time when we're doing our coverage at these air shows, we're talking to the biggest companies in the world, whether it's Boeing or Raytheon or L3 uh, or Airbus. But there are hundreds, if not thousands, of smaller companies here who are doing business. And joining us now is the Senior Vice President for Aerospace and Defense at Scient. Anand Paramiswaran. Yeah, thank you. It's wonderful to uh, join you here, Vago, and hope you're having a good show. Uh, so far, we're having a fantastic show, Anand. And I, what I wanted to ask you is, talk to us a little bit about your company, what you guys do, and where you fit into the whole uh, ecosystem, because you guys are an interesting company in that you have Indian roots, but global operations, a presence in the United States, and just a bunch of other companies around the world. So you're really a global multinational on a much smaller microcosm. I think that's a wonderful way of putting it. Uh, we are a global global company. More than 98% of our revenue comes from geography outside of our headquarters, which is India. About 60% of it from North America, about 25% from Europe, and about 13% or so from the rest of the Asian countries, primarily Japan and Australia. Uh, in the aerospace and defense, we have been uh, working for about 17 years, and uh, we have more than you know 2,600, 2,700 people working for us. About half of them are based out of India, and the remaining half are spread across the world, primarily again in North America, because that's a fairly large portion of our business, but also in Europe, you know, and in Singapore, etc. And like you rightly said, our goal has been to be a global company, regardless of size. And so, what are some of the product lines uh, that you're in? And you know, it's it's funny you find out that in this whole global aerospace and defense ecosystem, you find kind of key companies that are key suppliers, even if they're not giant companies. And you guys are around 500, 400 million? As a company, we, are about, we closed uh, at $538 million for uh, last year. And uh, that was about a 15% growth on uh, the year before that. So we are making you know steady progress in trying to become a not so small company. <laughs> and uh, we hope to sort of make further progress in that, uh, you know, from shows like this. And, and we're absolutely going to find a chalet in five years, right? Right on the number one chalet row. I hope so. I hope so. I hope, you know, we will uh, we will sort of rival some of the big players that you see. But, uh, you know, that's everybody's aspiration too. Uh, what are some of the technologies and the products that you guys make? How do you fit into the ecosystem? Okay. So what we primarily, you know, started as uh, is a design services partners for companies, you know, both the OEMs as well as the tier ones. Uh, whether, you know, uh, Pratt & Whitney, for example, is a very large customer of ours. Uh, but we also have relationships with, uh, you know, all of the top 10, you know, uh, OEMs and tier ones in this particular space. Started out as a design services partner, uh, worked on, you know, multiple, you know, commercial platforms, both on the uh, structure side as well as the engine side, on the electronic side. And uh, where we are evolving over the last three to five years is that, you know, from a pure design services, you know, value offering for our customers, we are... Uh, evolving into a design, build, and maintain partner. So we uh, acquired capabilities in the manufacturing area, especially electronics and box build, which is working out very well for us and our customers. And we also have MRO and aftermarket capability to serve our customers in the aftermarket services space. So uh, in the last six years, from we have evolved from a design services partner into a design, build, maintain partner that can really, you know, bring you know the cost uh, down. We that can deliver, you know, on schedule and uh, bring the appropriate quality and safety that's required for the aerospace market. And what about on the defense side of things? What are your sort of more defense unique offerings? Okay, so our defense play, you know, has been limited to, you know, kind of uh, uh, the make in India or the defense offsets until now. But uh, we see this as a significant opportunity to sort of, uh, you know, branch into. So what we are focusing on is uh, specific markets uh, that, uh, you know, we are entering into and we've identified two markets across the world, apart from India, where we believe that we can be a significant uh, defense partner for uh, companies in that and you will see over the next 12 to 18 months uh, some s announce from from our side that will uh, hasten our progress in that direction. You know you mentioned make in India um, there has been a lot of discussion here at the show about President Trump's discussion of buy American and America first uh, at a time when the world is beginning increasingly globalized particularly in this space uh, you know in no modern aircraft or even weapon system is now all organic from one one particular country and I wanted to ask you sort of the challenges that that I mean, is that a challenge at a time when, you know, you're a multinational Indian company with presences around the world? Uh, you know, d does it does it cut a certain way that, uh, because then American guys can point and say, oh, well, you know, you have make in India. 
uh, and so Buy American it, it is good. You know, how, you know, do you have any concerns in this space and with some of the rhetoric, whether it's coming from Delhi or Washington? Okay, so these are tough problems, right? Uh, as, you know, as countries, uh, each of them are trying to craft their own direction of where they want to be. And then as businesses, our job, we feel, is to align with each of those and, you know, make sure that we are operating within, you know, what each of the governments are, you know, going at. So we really see this as an opportunity. I mean, whether it's make in India or, you know, make in America, we really don't see it as, you know, something which are, uh, you know, uh, how do you say, different from each other. They can be complementary and to a large extent they are complementary. If you look at, you know, the workforce that we have, like I said, you know, half of our people are in India. The remaining half are in the rest of the world, and a significant majority of that are in the U.S. And these are, you know, local U.S. nationals. Uh, these are, you know, people who are, you know, who are there. So we are creating those jobs. We are able to sort of leverage the skill and capability which is available in both sides. And we are, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we do our best to make both countries successful and operate, you know, in the environment that the governments, you know, want us to operate in. And one last question. What are you guys highlighting here at the show? Every company has got the new product, the new un unveiling, the new offering. What are you, what are you guys touting here at uh, Le Bourget? Okay, so one of the key things that uh, we are doing is uh, focusing on our design build play. So, uh, you know, the capabilities that we have of doing a build to specification. So that's one key thing that we are highlighting. The second thing that we are highlighting is our digital transformation offerings uh, from analytics, to uh, Internet of Things, as well as uh, augmented and virtual reality-based service offering uh, in the area of aerospace. Uh, we see this as an exciting you know, uh, piece of play that can transform the way design, manufacturing, and aftermarkets are done in aerospace. And uh, you know, we are getting a lot of customer interest, and I'm sure that you will see significantly more traction in the next year when we meet next. And um, what's your five-year goal? What, how big do you guys expect to be in another five years? I think, uh, you know, rather than a revenue goal, our objective is to become a lot more integrated into the aerospace, you know, supply chain. Uh, we want to make sure that we develop much deeper expertise. Uh, we, you know, have a solid play in defense, like I said, not just in the India market, but also in the two other markets that we said. Um, you know, revenue goals, you know, uh, are going to, you know, as long as you're providing value to the market, the market always takes care of you in terms of revenue and profits. Our key is to make sure that we provide the right value, Ago. Anand, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Best of luck, and we look forward to seeing you on row one. My pleasure, and I hope so too.